Hey guys, JWar here with another video. So today we're going to talk about leveling and progressing through the early game in Path of Exile. This is going to be kind of a guide coming up for 3.19. We're going to start covering how to leak start, how to do it better, how to do it efficiently, and uh, maybe just some tips and tricks and uh, some tips for new players as well of things to worry about in your objectives in the early game. Just to go over a couple things, we're going to highlight probably three main things in this video getting through the axe why you want to get through the axe what's the value of getting through the axe faster and why you should practice doing it and get familiar with your character right and then we're going to talk about your early goals in the end game once you've gotten leveled what should you be worried about the three things i would say are most important is first of all you want to focus on map sustain and some new players struggle with this actually they don't know what nodes to take on the atlas passive tree to get more maps and they say well i'm at tier four five six maps and um i'm having trouble to get map drops well it's because they didn't take the map nodes on the atlas passive tree first and foremost so we'll talk about how to do that we'll also talk about your second and third goals which should be then after you have your map sustained in a good place you're dropping a lot of maps well you, the reason you want to drop a lot of good maps is to complete the atlas right so you want to complete the atlas and then you want to worry about or simultaneously achieve getting all your void stones because that's going to give you even more map drops upgrade your atlas to be all tier 16s which we kind of want to get to that point eventually i think that's probably the best place to have your atlas at unless you're doing some some uh, gimmicky like uh, lower tier map farming or something like that but all right so let's get into it all right guys so let's talk about leveling for a second how quickly should you be able to get through the axe well i would say anywhere from four to eight hours is going to be very respectable if you get through the axe in that amount of time you're looking pretty good if it takes you longer than that i would suggest practicing leveling and um i kind of bit the bullet one league and just practice leveling because i knew i was kind of slow and it's helped me out every league since so if you're maybe bored of sentinel league maybe you need something to do maybe you're trying to get ready for the new league start practice leveling because it's going to help you out tremendously in getting a good league start and just to go over it for a second why you want to level quickly is because all the items are basically cheap at the beginning of the league and the faster you can get into the opportunistic time period of being able to acquire good items early the more money you're going to make later in the league because all those good items you get are going to grow in value later in the league because everything is cheap early really the way it works is most really good items are cheap really good rares and stuff are going to be cheap uh, because nobody can charge that much for them because nobody can nobody has the exalts to buy a hundred exalt item right so people that are selling a really good item that might be worth a hundred exalts later in the league have to charge uh, I don't know 20 30 40 for it right much less basically this is kind of different with um, a leveling or build enabling uniques those are generally more expensive because they're in high demand and they're not in great supply early on right so leveling uniques are going to be very expensive the first few days and then they're going to come down in price drastically right but then good items after those first few days like really good uh tailwind boots or something like that are going to be much cheaper than they are later in the league so if you're going to acquire them early you're going to be paying much less for them so that's one of the reasons why you want to get through very quickly so that you can start getting some of the items for cheaper than you will pay if you get them later in the league okay guys so let's talk about something that's going to be really crucial to your leveling experience and making leveling much better so you want to be really familiar with what gem sockets you need and what skill gems you need so just an example here this is uh what i used during 3.17 i was playing earth shatter into general cry because i was going into a war cry build a general's cry so i leveled uh i think i started out with shattering steel in the early acts and then i switched into the slam earth shatter war cry build for the later acts and then early mapping and then i knew i wanted to switch into my blade flurry general scry right so i knew i was going to want these gem setups going into maps and this is all the stuff i was going to pick up in the axe right so you want to be really familiar with this i made a list and then i to make it even easier for myself later on i could pull this up and i say okay so when i'm ready to switch to blade flurry i'm dropping these gems here that's right the red x for i'm adding these gems here right this is the setup i need and i even took it a step further i made a checklist right 
this is the stuff I need to switch into Blade Flurry General's Cry because I knew and I played it and I, I practiced it. I knew that it does not feel good to switch. It's actually stronger to play the Earth Shatter build until I have this checklist done. I need these five things until I can play Blade Flurry General's Cry. But the main thing here, you don't have to do all this. It's a little overkill with what I did, right? But I'm, I'm a big PoE nerd, so <laughs> I like doing that stuff. So, uh, But the main thing is the gem links. You want to be really familiar because, uh, you know, I've done it before. I played a new build and I'm like, okay, I sit in town for five minutes trying to figure out what gem socket links I need. Oh, what do I need? I need a two green, two red. For this gem setup, I need a three red, one green for this gem setup. Okay, well, let me roll chromas on my gear. Instead of just seeing them and recognize them in the axe and picking them up off the ground and knowing what gems I'm going to use for them, right? That's what you want to have when you're going through the leveling. It's very important. It's going to help your speed out greatly doing that. All right, so let's take a look at the early Atlas passive tree and how, in my opinion, everybody should be setting up their Atlas passive tree when they first get into maps and start using the points. Um, obviously, the most important thing is going to be map sustain early because your objectives should be completing the Atlas and unlocking your void stones, right? Because you're gonna get more points on your Atlas tree, you're gonna get more points to spend on other passives to make every map you do more rewarding, right? So you wanna unlock all that potential. And then once you've unlocked an adequate amount to do the farm you want to do, which is probably gonna be somewhere uh, north of 100 points, right? We're at 32 right now. So this is the first 32 points I would spend in the Atlas tree. We'll talk about them real quick. Um, basically, it all revolves around maps have a 15% chance to be one tier higher. That effectively gives you a 15% more chance to get another map in your maps and a higher tier map, right? Which you're trying to work your way up the map tiers. So you want to get those higher tier maps to complete your Atlas and to fill it out and get all the bonuses so you can get more Atlas passive points. So another huge thing here is Kirak missions. Gain one additional Kirak mission each day, 3% to get an additional Kirak mission on completion. What Kirak missions do for you guys, they're a, a little button you can click on your map device. Kirak's gonna let you pick from a big list of maps what map you wanna run, right? And oftentimes he's gonna have a map in there that you have not completed yet that you'll get another bonus point for completing. So it's absolutely huge to start getting Kirak missions early, right? To unlock more map points. Okay, moving on. This is just basically another maps that have a 15% chance to be one tier higher and the same over here. So those are the crucial nodes to have for your early map sustain, I would say. Um, once you have those, uh, additional connected maps nodes are really strong, map duplicated nodes are really strong. You can basically just start to move up the tree and pick more League of Mechanics stuff here. Maybe you're doing Essence early, maybe you're doing some Strongbox stuff early. Uh, it doesn't really matter from this point, but this is the basic Atlas passive tree setup. I think you should go with early for a map sustain, which should be your priority until you get your Atlas completed, right? And this is subject to change with 3.19. I don't think they'll change it too much. They'll probably add maybe some more big keystone nodes, maybe some other interesting things. I don't think they're gonna be taking away any of this for a map sustain, but we'll see and we'll update accordingly. Okay guys, so just to cover this for newer players here of what I've been talking about with uh, the Atlas and map completion and bonus points for completing maps, we're going to take a look at it here. So, first thing is when you don't have any void stones, your Atlas is going to look like this. Not quite like this, you're not going to have uh, everything complete like I do, but it'll you'll be able to see what I'm talking about here. So let's talk about how to get completion. So I have an underground C map here. A little tip for new players, uh, if you're trying to locate it on the Atlas passive tree, to see what you need to do for completion because unfortunately it doesn't tell you right atlas map complete you get a point for that and you can also get a point for the bonus objective which is going to give you an atlas passive point how do you get the bonus objective right some some new players may be wondering how do you get the bonus objective what is the bonus objective? well you have to hover over the map or on the atlas passive tree and it's going to tell you what to do for the bonus completion so the lower tier maps uh, are going to be just a magic which means you just have to roll it blue right with a orb of transmutation okay the as you get up the tree higher okay now we need to kill a rare version for the bonus objective right so you can need to roll it yellow with an alchemy orb right and then as you get even higher to red maps natural red maps is what these are called um basically as you add the void stones it's going to upgrade the tier but the natural 
uh, level of the map, which changes every league with the different map cycles, um, is going to be indicated by where it's at on the passive tree. Basically, the, tier, the maps down here are going to be required you to do a magic version of the map. The maps up here are going to be rares, and then the maps really high up are going to be corrupted rares, in which you need to roll it rare with an alchemy orb, and then vol it with a vol orb, right? So we're not going to get too much into that, and the last thing we'll talk about are the void stones here. And um, I've been alluding to these in the video, and just to go over them real quick, you get these from killing Eater of Worlds, Searing Exart, Maven, and Uber Elder. Those are the bosses you need to take down, and what these do, if you notice, they're very important to have because they have 25% chance for maps to drop one tier higher, and they also upgrade the level of maps, right? These were tier 1, now they're tier 4, right? Now they're going to just keep going up in tier until all the maps in your Atlas device are in, on your Atlas or tier 16, which is a very important for um, progressing to the end game. I think this is the best state to have your Atlas in unless you're doing a lower tier map farm for a specific strategy. But this is going to give you the most map sustain overall to have this set up with all your void stones in and all your additional maps to be one tier higher. You're basically guaranteed to get a higher tier map every time you run a map, which when you're at all tier 16, you're just guaranteed to get another map every time you run a map, which is very important. And that's uh, probably the last thing we'll talk about here in this video. All right, so that's going to be it for this one, guys. Uh, we're going to do more videos like this leading up to 3.19. This one was kind of just the uh, the first kind of introductory video. A lot of stuff probably for newer players. Uh, we'll get into some more advanced topics and tips and tricks for league starting that uh, might be more helpful to you uh, more advanced players out there. I know this one was kind of basic, but we'll get into some more advanced stuff later. More videos for uh, 3.19 prep and all that kind of fun stuff to come for the new league. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching.